Hey guys, here is a whole topic summary for AQA Physics Waves. For this topic and all of the other topics for your exams, all the quite practicals are your keywords, you can go over to my website and get my free version guide, or you can get that over on Amazon. A transverse wave goes up and down. From one point to another point, and this doesn't matter whether it's from the top to the bottom, from the middle to the middle, we have the wavelength. The amplitude is measured from the middle to the top, or from the middle to the bottom. The direction of movement for this is up and down. This could also be the direction of oscillation. And the direction of energy transfer is sideways. Here we have our longitudinal wave, where we have areas of compression. And areas of refraction. We can measure the wavelength in this from one point to another point. The direction of movement is side to side. And so is the direction of energy. Frequency is the number of waves per second. So if we look at this block here as a second in time, something that will have a low frequency, we are not going to see many peaks in one second. But something that had a high frequency, we would see lots of peaks or lots of waves within one second. You'll notice that for the high frequency one, it has a low wavelength, whereas for the low frequency one, it has a high or a long wavelength. If we want to measure the time period for something, that is 1 over the frequency. Time is measured in seconds and frequency is measured in hertz. There is a capital H and a lowercase z. Do not write lowercase both letters or uppercase both letters because they are wrong. If we want to measure the speed of a wave we can use a ripple tank um, this here will go in and out of the water creating waves from this we can measure wavelength and also looking at how many waves pass a certain point in a second frequency then we can use our equation um, to work out the speed of the wave. V equals F times lambda. To work out the speed of a wave, wave speed, we can take the frequency and times it by the wavelength. Our units for speed are in meters per second. Frequency is in Hertz, capital H, lowercase z, and wavelength is in meters. When a wave is reflected, it is going to come in, meet the boundary, and then be reflected off. Our angle of incidence is always going to be equal to our angle of reflection. So we can always say that I equals R. Your normal line is in the middle here. It is a dashed line and it is drawn at 90 degrees to the mirror or the surface that the wave is being reflected off. If we have a sound wave instead of a light wave that is being reflected, we are going to get an echo. A sound wave is a longitudinal wave.
it vibrates the air particles. And your eardrum in here will pick up the vibration of the air particles and turn it into sound which your brain can interpret. The range of human hearing is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We can use echo or ultrasound to determine distance and we can do that because speed equals distance over time. So if we know the speed of the wave, we can measure the time taken and we can calculate the distance. So um, a vessel exploring the sea can send down um, an ultrasound and measure the time it takes to come back. And the time it takes to come back will be shorter or longer depending on the distance. Now the really, really important thing to um, note here is that it is there and back again. So the time is double um, what it would be. Because the time it takes to get there and back is twice just the time it takes to get there. So if you have an echo or an ultrasound um, calculation you need to find distance, you need to think logically about the time calculation that you're using. Ultrasounds can also be used for medical imaging. Here is my massive bump, here was my massive baby. And you can see the hard parts, the jaw, the skull, the legs, they are going to reflect the ultrasound much more than the liquid or the soft tissue parts. When an earthquake occurs, we can use the resulting waves to give us information about the structure of the Earth's Earth. P waves are primary waves. They are longitudinal. They can travel through solids and liquids which means they can travel all the way through the Earth. So if an earthquake happens over here, the P waves are going to go all the way through, including through the solid core. S waves are secondary waves. They are transverse waves. And they can only go through solids. So they can't go through liquids. And because of these two different types of waves and how they're detected on the opposite side of the Earth, um, this tells us information about the structure of the Earth. Here we have the electromagnetic spectrum uh, from radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma rays. Um, over here, these ones are high energy. And these are low energy. These are going to have a high frequency. And these ones a low frequency. These are going to have a short wavelength. And these are long wavelengths. Wavelength for radio waves can stretch into the, the meters, the kilometers, very, very long wavelengths. Our radio waves can be used for radio communications. Microwaves can be used for mobile phones and for heating food. Infrared are used for things like um, the button, the, the light on your remote control. You can also use it for heat sensing. Visible light is used for cameras in your eye. Ultraviolet can be used for detecting things like um, fake money. Um, X-rays are used for broken bones and gamma rays can be used for treating cancers or sterilising things like killing bacteria. Diffraction happens when a wave passes through a gap. Here we have a small gap and here we have a large gap. And the wave will curve around as it comes out of that gap. The amount of curvature, the amount of diffraction, will depend 
on the size of the gap. Refraction happens when a wave passes from one medium into another medium, say from air into glass or air into water, and it will change direction. So here is our normal here, move it down to here. Um, it will change direction as it goes through there. And the reason it changes direction is because the wave changes speed, but different parts of the wave change speed at different points. So this part down here that hits um, first is going to change speed, either getting faster or slower before this part of the wave up here, which hasn't changed uh, medium or speed yet. Lots of different surfaces would emit and absorb radiation. Some will do it better than others. Over on the right hand side you can see the practical, one of the required practicals that I've done for you. Good absorbers are going to be dark surfaces and matte surfaces. Good emitters are going to be dark matte surfaces. Good reflectors are going to be shiny surfaces. A converging lens is shaped like this and this is a shorthand for it. It is used to correct long sightedness, it's going to produce a real image and it's a type of lens used in magnifying glasses. I have made many many videos showing you how to do ray diagrams but just as a quick recap for a converging lens your first line needs to go from the top um, to the lens and then on the other side through the primary focus. Your third, second line needs to go from the top through the middle. I should extend that line a touch. Your third line goes from the top through the focus until it gets to the axis. Then it runs parallel with the axis and is going to be there. Then over here we are going to get our image formed and that image is going to be upside down. So the top is there and the top is there. Your diverging lens is going to be curved in like this and this is the shorthand. It's going to correct short sightedness, it's going to give us a virtual image which is upright but smaller. Drawing a diverging lens, our first line goes from the top of the object to the axis and then we need to backtrack through the um, focus on the same side. So I'm just going to draw a dashed line here and then the line will actually go like that. And our second line needs to go from the top of the object through the middle and where those two points cross there is going to be our virtual image. Magnification is worked out by taking our image height and dividing it by the object height. And you'll be delighted to know that there are no units for this, so I won't be nagging about this one. Using a prism or water in this circumstance, visible light can be broken up into its different parts. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red light is going to have a wavelength of 7 times 10 to the minus 7 metres, moving through to violet which is going to have a wavelength of 4 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Frequency, we're looking at the other way around, so the frequency of red light is going to be 4 times 10 to the 14 hertz, whereas indigo is going to be 7 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Everything emits infrared radiation, and this is the balance between the amount of energy or the temperature, the heat that is being absorbed, and the amount that is being emitted at the same time. This can tell us a lot about the temperature of an object by looking at the wavelengths that are being emitted. Now a black body is an object in space which is going to perfectly absorb radiation. It does not emit it, it absorbs it.